Dangles occur when a teacher leaves a topic without having finalized it, provides a summation, or otherwise drawn the lesson to a full conclusion. Ano pong ibig sabihin nito? Ang ibig sabihin ng dangles ay nag-umpisa ka ng lesson, so engage na ang students mo, they're already motivated to learn, pagkatapos eh hindi na tapos yung discussion. Good day mga kaguro! Welcome to our new video which is about managing behavior via teaching style from the work of Jacob Kunin. This is one of the topics that you have requested for us to make a video on and today we are going to be talking about the proactive strategies and also some of the things that we need to avoid when we are dealing with students inside the classroom. We start if this is the first time that you visited our channel, make sure that you subscribe, you like the video, and that you hit the bell button so that you'll be notified of the new videos that we will have. Okay, we start with the proactive teaching strategies. What are some strategies that we can use so that we avoid having troublesome activities inside the room? The first one that we have here, of course, very popular, is with itness. Okay, so according to Kunin in 1981, it is not necessary to know what the teacher knows is going on. It is what the students believe she knows. And this, of course, simply means having an eye at the back of your head. Now, as teachers, it is very important for us to know what is happening inside the room. Okay, so when you say with itness, even while you are teaching and even while you are writing something on the board, you should know what your students are go are doing behind your back. Okay, so yan po yung ibig sabihin ng with itness. Dapat eh, nalalaman mo pa rin kung meron silang mga masamang ginagawa sa likod mo or dapat eh, malaman mo kung may mga misbehaving students na nasa likod mo. Kasi minsan, hindi natin alam na meron na palang masamang nangyayari sa loob ng ating classroom dahil nga busy busy tayo, nasa harap tayo ng, ng board. Okay, so according to Kunin, when you say with itness, a teacher should have eyes at the back of his head. So dapat eh, kahit na busy kang nagtuturo, marami kang ginagawa, alam mo pa rin kung meron ng mga misbehavior na nangyayari na, or mga misbehavior na ginagawa ng iyong mga students. Okay, so again, the first one is with itness, having eyes at the back of your head. The second proactive approach that we can use is overlapping. According to Kunin, still, in 1988, this means one without the other reduces the teacher's effectiveness. Okay, so this simply means that as the teacher, you should be able to do overlap. Okay, so ano nga ba yung ibig sabihin ng overlap? When you say overlap, dapat eh marunong ka mag-multitask. Okay, so for example, bilang guro, habang may ginagawa yung iyong mga students, at the beginning of the class ay nag-check ka na nga ng attendance. Habang sila ay, for example, nag-take down ng notes, pag malapit na sila matapos, matapos mag-take down ng notes, eh pwede ka nang magpasa ng worksheet or kung anumang papel na kailangan nilang gamitin para sa susunod na activities. Pwede ding nagsasalita ka habang nag-check ng papel or nagigive ka ng instructions habang chinicheck kung talagang ginagawa nila ang dapat nilang gawing activities. So as teachers, we cannot do away with the different tasks that we should do. So kailangan talaga one of the most very important skills that a teacher should have is multitasking. So yan po yung ibig sabihin ng overlapping. When you say overlapping again, a teacher should be able to multitask. We go to the next one, which is movement management. This means that the pace of the lesson should be modulated so that it keeps the attention of the students. Dapat e eh, smooth ang movement ng lesson mo. Dapat e eh, smooth ang movement ng mga activities mo inside the room. Dapat walang lag, dapat walang empty space, dapat walang dead air. So, pag ikaw ay naging expert na bilang teacher, alam mo na dapat kung anong gagawin mo, kung anong flow ng iyong activities, kung anong agenda mo inside the room sa isang araw. So, in our case here in the U.S., when we're teaching our students, we'd always be writing the agenda 
on the board. Okay, so yung agenda ay parang guide namin kung anong magiging flow, ag- flow of activities inside the room on that day. So again, movement management is one very important asset that a teacher should have. Dapat ay maging smooth ang flow ng activities inside your room. Dapat maganda yung pacing ng activities sa iyong room. Okay, so dapat walang lag, walang delay, dapat walang dead air. So dapat ay hindi nakatanga ang iyong mga estudyante. Dapat ay napaka praktisado or napaka smooth lang ng flow ng activity sa iyong room. Okay, now the last one that we have is group focus. This is the ability to keep all students actively participating in a lesson. Now, most of the time, this is one of the most difficult tasks that we can have as teachers. Okay, so usually, we can have 80% of the class who are actively participating and one or two students or maybe five of them would go astray. Okay, so ang sinasabi ng group focus, dapat eh, you are able to keep all of your students or if hindi man lahat, eh, the maximum of your, of your students still actively participating in a lesson. Okay, so dapat may group focus sila, dapat walang hindi gumagawa ng dapat nilang gawin. So dapat eh, bilang teacher talaga, chine-check natin kung ginagawa nila dapat nilang gawin at kung anumang task na uh, ibigay sa kanila ay ginagawa ng ating mga estudyante. So sa amin po dito, ang mga students ay provided ng laptops and and uh, we give them activities in Google Classroom. So, meron siya mga activities na online. So, from time to time, as a teacher, hindi po pwedeng nakaupo ka lang or hindi po pwedeng nandun ka lang sa teacher's desk mo. So, while they're doing their work, they're doing their task, you need to go around the room and you need to check that they are on task, that they're doing their work, or that they're not using YouTube or the, that they're not using their cell phones uh, akala mo ay eh, gumagawa sila ng kailangan nilang gawin na task o ng assignment nila pero yun pala ay eh, nanonood lang sila ng video sa YouTube okay so again group focus is the last approach that we can use para maging smooth ang activities natin inside the room para para walang misbehavior in our room okay now we go to the second part of this video which is the different things that we can avoid okay so ito nga yung um, isa sa mga topics na ni-request ninyo mga kaguro. The first one that we have here is dangles. Okay, dangles occur when a teacher leaves a topic without having finalized it, provides a summation, or otherwise drawn the lesson to a full conclusion. Ano pong ibig sabihin nito? Ang ibig sabihin ng dangles ay nag-umpisa ka ng lesson, so engage na ang students mo, they're already motivated to learn, Pagkatapos eh, hindi natapos yung discussion. O hindi mo siya sinummarize, hindi ka nagbigay ng closure. Kahit po sa classroom, katulad din ng ating mga relationships, dapat eh, pag may natatapos, meron din tayong closure. Dapat eh, hindi hanging yung activities ng ating students, hindi hanging yung attention at yung learning ng ating students. So, for your lesson to be very effective, you don't just start with the motivation and you go through a very good lesson activity, but it's also very important for you to end it with summation or closure na nga, closure nga na tinatawag natin. So, dapat eh hindi dangling ang iyong activities. So, again, when you see the term dangles or dangler in your licensure exam for teachers, this simply means that the teacher kept the students hanging. Hindi niya tinapos yung lesson, hindi niya tinapos yung, yung, yung topic nila by giving a summary. Okay? So, walang closure. Dapat, as teachers, we should be aware of the time. Hindi po pwedeng nagugulat tayo na, ay, tapos na pala yung time. Wala na pala tayong time para i-summarize to. Wala na tayong time para i-discuss to. Dapat eh, we should keep track of the time when we are inside the room. Now, the second thing that we have here is flip-flop. This one occurs when a teacher is teaching a lesson on one topic but then inserts an unrelated material from a previous lesson. Okay, so you are already discussing a certain thing and then suddenly you've inserted a certain topic that you are already done with. 
Okay, so what happens is that nalilito yung estudyante mo kung saan ba talaga yung focus nila. Is it in the current lesson or should they go back to the previous lesson that you've had? So when you say flip-flop, pabalik-balik ka. Pabalik-balik ka from one lesson to another. So dapat as a teacher, you should keep your focus so that the group focus of your students would also be achieved. Okay, so pag tapos na, tapos na. Kailangan eh mag-move on ka na, ika nga. Okay, so don't um, insert a previous topic in the current topic that you are already discussing with your students. Okay, we go to the next one, which is trust. This one naman occurs when teachers fail to give clear, well-worded directions when group attention was upon them. Okay, so you've already told your students, uh, excuse me everyone, I need you to give me your attention for a while or I want all ears. And then you give them certain instructions uh, as to what they need to do in their activity. Pero yung instruction mo was not clear. Yung instruction mo was not well-worded. Okay, so instead of being clear, for them, naging confusing yung instructions mo. So in this case, what happens is that your students would start complaining. Your students would start asking you several questions. Or sometimes, meron ka pang instruction na hindi na-include sa first time na mag-give ka ng instruction sa kanila. So this would oftentimes create confusion. So as teachers, we should avoid this by planning on what instructions to give. Okay, so usually, if you have an activity for, in my case, for example, if I am going to give them a certain activity, I would practice the rewording of my instructions. So, dapat e clear yung instructions mo. It's also very important that you give the time limit to your instructions. So, you might say, like in my classroom, I have um, a clock. So, I can say that by 9.30, we should be all be done so that we can already go over it or we can discuss it. So, dapat e kompleto yung, yung instructions mo. Kahit yung movement nila, are they allowed to get out of their chairs? Are they allowed to talk to their partners? Are they working in groups or are they working independently? Lahat ng ito dapat ay nakalatag. So dapat dapat lahat ng ito ay clear sa yung students para walang confusion, para nga eh, smooth yung flow of activity inside the room. Now, the last one that we have here is stimulus bound. This one, this problem occurs when a teacher gets distracted by outside stimuli okay so this usually would happen if someone would knock on the door or someone would be asking permission to talk with a student in your room or kunwari eh kailangan ka ng principal or kunwari eh kailangan ka ng secretary in our case here in the u.s our doors are locked from the outside Okay, so no one can open the door from the outside. So, ma open lang yung door namin if someone would stand from inside the room and open the door. Now, another problem in our case is that we have the intercom system. So, sometimes there will be some interruptions like um, the assistant principal, the principal would say, pardon this interruption and then they'd be giving some announcements. Okay, so... The students would oftentimes feel frustrated when this happens, especially if the students have already started working or we have already started discussing or going over the lesson and then we have to stop because there's um, an announcement that they're, they're making. Okay, so as a teacher also, you should be aware that you should keep your focus. Dapat hindi ka bound ng stimulus. Pag nagsabi ka na stimulus or pag sinabi mong stimulus, these are things that are asking for your response. Okay, so dapat if someone would be knocking on your door and sarap na sarap ka sa discussion, you could ask that person to wait first until you're done with your discussion. Sometimes I'd also do this whenever uh, a student would ask permission to go to the restroom and nasa discussion phase kami, then I'd tell the student to wait until I'm done with the discussion, okay? Because most of the time, if the student would go out, go to the restroom, during the time that you are having your discussion, then the student 
would lose the chance of learning. Okay, so marami siyang hindi maririnig from you because of course, we all know that still the teacher is the most important person inside the room. Uh, no amount of technology can take the place of the teacher. So kahit na nakikita nila yung words minsan, it is still better if you explain it to them. Okay, so as teachers, again, you should not be bound by stimulus. If there is something that gets your attention, or there's something that gets uh, the attention of your students and that distracts them, you should make your effort, you should make a way that the whole class is not distracted. So you stop that certain stimulus or you ask that person to wait until you're done discussing the lesson. Okay, so these are a few of the things that uh, we have already covered today. Again, if you have comments or suggestions, make sure that you put them in the comment box. If there are some topics that you still feel confused about, then just tell us and we are going to try our best to make a video so that you can easily understand all these things. Okay, sa muli, ito po yung inyong Gurong Pinoy na nagsasabing, maliit man na butil na mga kaalaman, ang dulo nito ay malaking kaginhawaan. Maraming salamat at hanggang sa muli, mga kaguro.